Hey guys, it's Brooke and welcome back to 13 Days of Taylor. Today, on our fourth day of Taylor, we are going to be breaking the age-old Taylor Swift stereotype, which is what, my friends? That Taylor only writes songs about boys, she only writes songs about blaming her exes for things, she and every single one of her songs you can assign to a different day. I'm going to be taking you through songs by Taylor Swift that, in fact, you cannot no matter how hard you try, assign a single one of her exes to. These are songs about friends, family, and other things besides breakups, and these are all good songs. We're gonna spice it up just a little because I feel like in the other videos I've been doing everything where I do it from self-titled to reputation and don't like mix it up, so we are putting these on shuffle today, okay? We're getting we're getting all across the board throughout her entire career. There's a song off of every album on here. Has nothing to do with an ex. Not pretty. Tied Together with a Smile is a song that she wrote when she was a teenager about her friend who had anorexia. And this is some of the first exposure that I ever had to her self-titled album as far as the non-single tracks go. Because I remember I had friends who would talk about this when I was in probably second grade. And I, because I didn't know the songs off of her self-titled record besides the singles. And I didn't appreciate this song until much later, until I was probably 11 or 12. I started, I heard this and I was like, wow, that's fantastic but this song is about her friend and it kind of details in general suicidal people people who are insecure and things of that nature people who battle mental health issues and it's a really really good song and has absolutely nothing to do with boys okay i know that you knew that this was going to be on here but <laughs> this is 22 you just i had to put it on here you know it's just the classic jam about hanging out with your friends and being 20 freaking two and i just i had to do it and this is a fun song that she wrote about spending time with her friends and being as she calls it happy free confused and lonely in the best way so yeah you cannot assign any part of this song to a specific person. There's no, oh, is this song about Jake Gyllenhaal? Oh, is this song about John Mayer? Oh, is this song about Harry Styles? No, it's about her friends. Thank you. <laughs> Another one in that same vein is Welcome to New York. And she talks about love, but it is in fact not love for any human being. It is the love she feels for the city of New York and the freedom that she felt when she moved there. Change? I know that I didn't put this in my underrated song list that I put out yesterday. Go check it out by the way. But I feel like this is a song that not a lot of people know and this was a single but I feel like it was like probably if not the most underrated single, one of the most underrated singles she's ever put out. And this song is fantastic. This is like, I don't know what you would call this song, but it it has this rebellious protest kind of feel to it. And I love it, but it's not in like an in your face way. It's just like, hey, we have the power to make a difference, but not in a corny way. And I love this song. And not a single ex is involved. Drunk and and all about mean is a classic, and this is another song that can be related to anyone who feels left out or like they're worth less than anyone else, anyone who's experiencing any kind of hate from anyone else. And this song has nothing to do with boys. It talks about people criticizing her. I actually found out while doing research for this series that it's speculated that she wrote this song about a critic 
who wrote an article trashing her Grammy performance she did with Stevie Nicks and I was like because it's Stevie Nicks and Taylor and that gives that song even more meaning to me and I'm just like I'm five years old the best day is one of my favorites as we all know and this song is a good old appreciation song for your mama miss andrea swift was the inspiration for this song but it applies to most mothers and this is a beautiful song that is full of innocence and talks about being a kid and growing up and realizing that your mom has always been your best friend and i love this song Long Live is another favorite of mine and this song a lot of people think that it's about her and her band and it very well maybe but what I think it really applies to is graduation and I'm about to be a senior in high school and I like totally want this to be my graduation song like not my not that that's like a designating thing like my graduation song but like whatever kind of graduation party whatever we have this song will be playing because this is one of the ultimate graduation songs that talks about friends and about change and about leaving your old life behind and it has nothing to do with joe jonas me because i'm still trying this is a song that I discussed in my favorite Taylor Swift lyrics part one. Stay tuned for a part two of that very soon. And that is Taylor's song, A Place in This World. And this song just kind of details the feeling that every teenager has at some point where I know I definitely experienced within the last years slash still kind of am experiencing. And A Place in This World is a really good title to kind of stand for that confusion where you're and she starts the song with the line I don't know what I want so don't ask me and it's just like being a teenager and not knowing what you want to do but you feel like you have this crunch time to figure it out and that's a really really relatable song you know 12 years after she put out that album and as someone who you know was in kindergarten when she released this album and is now about to be a senior I really feel that <laughs> This song she says she wrote about little girls that she sees who are seven or eight and she just wishes she could just sit down and tell them all these things and this song is definitely a mom song even though Taylor Swift is not a mom and was not a mom when she wrote it um, a lot of my friends that I have who are moms uh, really really like I feel like people are sitting here like why do you have friends that are moms I worked at a daycare okay really love this song and it is it makes me cry thinking about myself getting old about my little sister about other people in my life who are growing up and about growing up being inevitable and this is another one that just captures that bit of innocence and it's kind of a slow burn bittersweet song because she says you know even though you want to just try and never grow up and you know that that's inevitable and that's impossible and this is a really really well written track off of speak now in a similar vein as mean she talks about in this song she does talk about exes but not in the way you might think she talks about the media's perception of her and that she just has to shake off all of the haters i'm sure even if you don't like taylor swift you know this song she does make that little mention towards the end if you don't know what it is, you probably do, but I, I'm gonna lip sync it anyway because it's my favorite part of the song. Hey, hey, hey. But I bet you can't tell me who that's about. And if anything, this song is making fun of the way the media portrays her seeing her exes. But you cannot attribute this song to one person at all. I'd like to see you try. Speed rattle in the chandelier. This is why we can't have nice things is obviously about Kanye West, but it's not about an ex, it's about an ex friend, but it is not about a failed relationship. And that is good enough. 
the outside i believe is the song that taylor wrote for her self-titled album as i referenced when she was 12 and this is another song about exclusion from friend groups and she says you know i've been in a lot of lonely places but i've never been on the outside looking in and she's talking about you know being excluded from a clique or from something that is going on that she wants to be a part of but she can't and she's basically says you know you don't even know me why won't you give me a chance to prove that i'm a good person just like you are Angel City and the last one is one of my favorites and it is the lucky one which i'm pretty sure i've mentioned in like every video up to this point this song is about the struggles of fame and reportedly about joni mitchell and her struggles with fame and how taylor now relates to them so there you have it folks every taylor swift song is not about boys or about breaking up with someone thank you case closed. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope that you are enjoying this series so far. Please leave me some feedback on what you think of it. Make sure to check out the first three days that are going to be linked first thing in the description bar. Make sure to check out the rest of the days which are coming. I post a video every day at 1 p.m. And yeah, make sure also to check out the recent videos on my channel. Please, please take a moment out of your day and watch my Justice for Alyssa video. Or if you don't have time to listen to me talk for 20 minutes, Google Justice for Alyssa or Alyssa Attorney and please inform yourself on that situation. That is so much more important in the scheme of things than any of the other things that I'm talking about. So please, please look at that. And also there's a my final Houston vlog and there's a monthly favorites video and yeah, and the other days of Taylor. So I feel like there are probably people watching this who don't even like Taylor Swift and they're like, when are you gonna shut up? And I'm only a third of the way done, so you're kind of out of luck. But there's probably something for almost everyone on my channel somewhere so check some of those things out don't forget to subscribe for more content whether it's taylor content or not like this video so i know how you're feeling about 13 days of taylor and yeah guys thank you for watching i'll see you tomorrow